Hi, hello, and welcome to February. I guess when you're watching this, it's more about a week into February, which is wild. I wanted to just switch things up a little bit today. Instead of doing a vlog where I bring you along with my work day, I just wanted to sit down. Me being pregnant, I wanna sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and go over my January sales. And so we're gonna go over some stats first that I found interesting and wanted to look over just for my own knowledge and business assessment. And then um, also look over what sold fast this month. So what I listed in the month of January that sold within a week. And I really like this information. This is probably what I look for most when I'm watching YouTube videos because it tells me what to pick up that will just give me a really fast return. And as resellers, of course, that is the best scenario. So let's just jump into these numbers. Quick disclaimer, if you watched my goal setting video, which I'll link up on the screen, my goal was to hit $5,500 in sales this month. We're slowly ramping up to my ultimate goal. Um, however, <laughs> <laughs> that slow ramp is actually gonna kind of taper off because I'm due with a, another baby girl on April 1st. So I am trying to really grapple what my new goals are going forward. But the other thing is I was really on a solid pace on a great track for January, starting out like the first two weeks. And then I think it was like exactly two weeks in, we had a huge snowstorm that completely derailed everything. We had a week in which we had no power at our house. We didn't have power at our office for a while. Uh, we were living out of hotels and I couldn't list. I could barely ship. And I also didn't have my posture VA running. It just completely halted my progress. I'm actually really proud of my results based off of that because the thing is, yeah, it, we were out of power for a week but we just got our hot water on at our house two days ago and we still don't have internet at our house which is actually a huge detriment to me being able to get work done because typically what I will do is I'll do all my photographing steaming and mentoring at the office and then I'll go home and either in the morning or at night I will list and so I'm just now not able to work as much which sucks quite frankly i really would like my internet back <laughs> it's been three weeks <laughs> anyways those are all little disclaimers before we jump into the numbers it, i was so disappointed and mentally honestly i'm still affected from this storm and the pregnancy hormones don't help but we're getting through my sales for january my total sales number and honestly this could change because eBay returns could still roll in, but as of now, it's $6,220.18. My earnings, which means I, I track this number because it's good for cash flow for me. It is uh, my number minus my shipping costs and my platform fees, but it doesn't subtract my cost of goods. And so this number is basically what number is being deposited into my bank account which is helpful for me. But this is $4,603.49. But then my gross profit, which includes my cost of goods, is $3,434.41. So not spectacular, but actually I'm really proud of the progress. It's an improvement from December. It's an improvement from November. And I've just been slowly ramping up and I am you know, I really was on track to make 7,000. I was really gunning for that, but that's okay. We hit our goal that we set in our goal setting video and then some, so that's good. I listed 125 items. So my goal was to list 10 per day, 300 items. Fell short of that goal and I sold a total of 144 items. My average sales price is actually really good. I'm happy with it. It's $43.20. Would love to be able to maintain that. Total on Poshmark. So breaking down my three platforms I have is sell on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. $3,102.99 on Poshmark. $2,345.05 on eBay. And then for Mercari, it was $730.14, which is actually quite an improvement. And I'm starting to see more sales on Mercari, which is nice. I'm having more eBay sales as well. I'm seeing definitely a ramp up in eBay sales, so I'm happy about that. This is something I typically have never reported, but just for my own curiosity's sake, I went through and coded my sales for this just to see 
what was selling, like where I sourced the items I was selling. I should have also probably coded where I sourced the items I listed and compare those two things, but I'm just curious, where did I get the items I'm selling? <laughs> I broke it down both by the number of items that I sold and the dollar amount. Here, I'll scoot over and throw up this chart, which shows you the percentage of where I source these items from. So when we look at number of items, 36.8% of my sales came from, in terms of number, came from liquidation. And if you have been following me for a while, you know that I did liquidation for about three years. And so I have I really only been doing not liquidation for like a year and a half, I think. That is to be expected. Actually, I'm pretty happy that that number seems to be going down, but I do still have quite a bit of inventory sourced from liquidation. And then 26.4% came from the Goodwill outlet, the bins, and then 26.4% came from the Goodwill thrift, which I thought was interesting. Equal amounts selling from both. And then 6.3% uh, was coming from consignment, and I really only go to Crossroads, so that's what I put on the uh, chart breakdown. And then 4.2% coming from retail arbitrage, which I really don't do much anymore, but I used to do some. So I really wanted to compare the sourcing breakdown from the number of items sold versus the monetary value sold. For instance, I sold 53 items from liquidation, 38 from the bins, and 38 from thrift, 9 from consignment, and 6 from retail arbitrage, that's number of items. And then switching over to the amount of money sold, I sold $2,000. $14.40 from liquidation, $1,329.18 from the bins, $1,763.43 from Goodwill Thrift, $660.19 from consignment, and $452.98 from retail arbitrage. So uh, something that is noteworthy is that liquidation goes down. So it goes down from 36.8% to 32.4% uh, we're when we're looking at the dollar makeup of my sales here. So it is the Goodwill outlet, which is to be expected because the average sales price from my bins items is lower than the average sales price from my Goodwill thrift items. And that is represented in this chart. And then also Crossroads, of course, is taking up a bigger percentage now. It's taking up 10.6 uh, because my average sales price is much higher for this sourcing strategy. And then retail arbitrage, similarly. Retail arbitrage, my cost of goods is much higher. In Crossroads, I've been able to maintain a low cost of goods because I take Ben's items to Crossroads. And I did a whole video kind of breaking down that strategy and sharing my spreadsheet on that recently, which I'll link up on the screen. I thought that was very interesting, all of those numbers. Um, maybe I'll just talk really briefly, I don't want to bore y'all, but really briefly about, I had the goal of listing 10 per day in January. I obviously didn't even come close to that, <laughs> but I still had pretty good sales. So I'm certainly not having that expectation going into February. So I think I'm going to go back to my previous goal of listing five per day, which I think is attainable, especially if I got internet back. <laughs> And honestly, I mean, I didn't even list five per day. That would be 150. So I listed 125. So if I could list 150 in the month of February, I guess actually it'd be 145 because February is a leap year, 29 days. But we'll just aim for 150 this month. That would be great. I have so many other goals outside of reselling for this month. We're hopefully getting close to launching our startup. Gotta get ready for this baby <laughs> coming. I just put together a list of what we need and went through all of my clothing that I have. I took an inventory of what we need to buy for that. Anyways, got a lot of things I want to get done this month. February is going to be a big month and the other thing is that as I become more pregnant, I'm also becoming more tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also, okay, my nose inflates around this time of my pregnancy. So, I don't know, it's a common symptom of pregnancy. So, I don't know, whatever. It's not the only thing that's inflated. <laughs> I feel like a balloon in general. <laughs> February, you know, five items a month, a day. And if I could hit six to 7,000 again, I'd be very happy, very, very happy. I would just like to remain on the trajectory, but another thing I have to do 
in February is figure out how I'm going to do this with a newborn. Last time I had a, a newborn, I had an employee who did a lot of all the shipping and so forth for me. So I might have to make some changes, probably increase my handling time on eBay. I do think it's really, really important that I may still go to work in some capacity because it helps me stay sane. And that's something that I kind of learned last time too. So, okay, let's jump into what sold fast. Enough rambling. Alrighty, so I actually had uh, 19 items sell within a week that I listed. So 19 out of the 125 items that I listed sold super fast. And I'm very happy with that. And I am, I was surprised by some of the items that sold fast and then other ones made sense to me. <laughs> so let's go through it. Let's start with what sold within seven days. And we're starting out with one of my favorite sales. And this was an item that I found at Crossroads. It was a new with tag anthropology plus size puff sleeve sweetheart dress in this cherry print. So cute in this chartreuse color. Oh my gosh. To die for because of that bins conversion my cost of goods was seven dollars and 67 cents and i had listed for 150 and someone accepted my posher va offer of 30 percent off at 105 which gave me a gross profit of 74 dollars and 31 cents and again sold in seven days one week so anthropology new tag plus size cute pieces no brainer for me i was really really excited to find that the bin or at crossroads and I didn't even check comps and I didn't end up having to. <laughs> so just um, happy with that sale and just happy that I was able to maintain a cost of goods of $7.67 for a new with tag and polish dress like that. Another seven day sale on Poshmark was a pair of Avoiri ripstop pant. Uh, I guess this is a, a staple style by Voari because they still sell it. Uh, I thought it was an older style but I think they still have it available on their website. I got these at Goodwill for $7.99. I listed them for $55. I think I received an offer for $40 which I accepted after seven days and that gave me a gross profit of $24 in a cent. So yay Voari. Got to be one of the fastest selling brands out there right now. So if you don't know it, know it. And if you do know it, find it <laughs> if you can. <laughs> be on the lookout. Typically if I find it, it's going to be on a new rack, but this one actually wasn't. So I feel like I find it most in the pants section, but that's probably just because I don't really go through tops. Next was an eBay sale and it's a brand that I have talked about this month being on the fence about, but this particular style sold super fast. So beta brand, this was a skinny leg denim jean. So I think maybe I sourced three beta brand pieces this month. Two were black pants and then one was a jean and it's a stretch yoga pant that looks like a denim jean. And this was in a large long. The other ones were good sizes too, like extra large and large. So maybe I am on the larger sizes denim beta brand. Yes, pick those up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is the takeaway here, but we'll see how those black ones do. They still haven't sold, but yeah. Anyways, I had it listed for 45 and these sold 29 plus 7.99 shipping. So 36.99 and my gross profit was $13 and 62 cents. And they sold after seven days. Like I said, okay, this is actually something that I didn't know existed. So you all know, I love selling figs. I will admit figs have slowed down in terms of where I sell, uh, there are some styles, especially jackets and items they don't produce anymore that sell pretty fast still, but the general like Yola pants and regular tops and so forth, it does take a little bit longer. It is more saturated. However, I found a new line. Well, I don't know if it's new, new to me line within figs that sells fast and that is figs pro never found it before this is my first time and it sold within seven days so it was a pair of figs pro skinny zip trousers in a size extra large that i got at goodwill for 7.99 had a listed for 58 and it sold for 40 which is great for figs and that gave me a gross profit of 21 dollars 99 and like i said sold in a week so if you find figs pro even if you're anti-figs 
I'd say pick it up. So let's move on to what sold in six days. Uh, this was another sale I loved and it was an item that I got at Crossroads. Sold on Poshmark in six days is this Mata. I think this was the first time selling this brand. I think Yamini dress. Definitely something, this dress, the anthropology dress, something I'm noticing is that spring and summer dresses are starting to sell. Like really cute ones especially and ones that are being listed now so that's what I'm going to focus on going forward. I'm going to really start focusing on spring summer dresses and swimwear. If y'all want me to do like go over some swimwear brands that I have really loved selling in the past um, and that I'm on the lookout for let me know. I've done a video like that before and didn't perform well but I think that is a question that a lot of people have and I have a pretty good amount of experience with swimwear. This was really cute. I got it. My cost of goods because of my conversion was $8.95. I had it listed for $150. I think I received an offer for like $70 and went back and forth and then we landed on $90 which the buyer accepted and so that gave me a gross profit of $63.05 and yep it sold within six days. And then this was a sale actually to my fellow Portland reseller Renee which is so sweet of her. She watched uh, one of my YouTube videos and saw this and then accepted my offer on it. It's so cute. I really love this piece that I found. It is a Patagonia Cinchilla Vintage Jacket. It's like a barn jacket. Really, really cute from 1998. I got this on a new rack at Goodwill for $12.99. Patagonia on their website, they sell vintage and used pieces. They had it listed for 100 so I was just like, okay, I'll list it for 100 And so it sold for 70 because my Posture VA offer sends out 30% off offers to likers. And Renee accepted that offer, and that gave me a gross profit of $40.99. So thank you, Renee. She has an amazing Instagram account. It's called Feel Styled, and she just makes amazing reels. And it's just a really, like, stylish reseller that sells really cool stuff so definitely give her a follow over on instagram and thank you renee for your purchase love that jacket but yeah patagonia especially certain pieces are just gonna sell fast and actually it appears later on this list too okay so next is a brand that not all not always sells fast but certain pieces definitely still do a lot of these brands on this list that's true for everlane uh, this sold on eBay. It was the Everlane straight leg crop pant and uh, size too short. So this I got at the bins and someone I think had thrown it back because condition it was a little bit faded and I decided to pick it up and sell it. I was excited to find it and it sold fast. So I got it for $1.65 at the bins. Had it listed for $32. Someone sent me an offer for $22 plus $7.99 shipping which gave me a gross profit of $15.78 and it sold in just five days. So certain like the barrel style leg pant by Everlane and certain other styles of pants and jeans can do well but like the high rise skinny I just skip every single time. I probably pick it up at the bins and probably take it to crossroads if I found it but especially smaller sizes and I just honestly don't pick up Everlane skinny jeans at all anymore but there are certainly some styles that do well. Next another brand that some people especially in the in the video where I talked about brands I, that are dead to me which I'll link up on the screen a brand that a lot of people were commenting about was Torrid. Some pieces of course by Torrid just aren't selling like they used to but I have had some pieces sell super fast this month in February and last month. In January, I had this pair of Torrid multi-zip jeggings that were plaid, size 18, sell super fast that I got the bins for $1.65, same bins trip as those Everlane pants. I had them for 28, they sold full price on Poshmark, which is great, and sold in four days. And that gave me a gross profit of $20.75. So I wouldn't write off all Torrid. And it's hard for me to know which ones sell fast and which ones don't, because I'll find a really cute dress that'll sit and sit, but then plaid, skinny jeans that don't so it's not going to sell for you know a ton of money like perhaps it used to but some pieces still sell fast and reliably so I still pick up Torrid especially from the bins almost exclusively from the bins and the next one is actually a piece I meant to not get from the bins <laughs> I was really happy when it sold fast it just somehow missed my sorting uh, but I got it at the bins it was J Crew 90s organic slub cotton t-shirt it was a really new style really nice t-shirt size large women's same bins trip $1.65 I had it listed for 20 and someone accepted my posture VA offer of 30% off sold for 14 
So it gave me a gross profit of $7.38. Definitely not telling you to run out and buy a bunch of J. Crew t-shirts, but uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised with this. Sold in four days. I mean, my gross profit being $7.38. I don't know if I do it again, but you know, technically it sold within a week, so I did include it on the list. And if I am going to accidentally <laughs> pick up a J. Crew t-shirt and list it, this is the best result I could ask for. If you listen to podcasts, you've heard about Brooklyn and they advertise in podcasts like crazy, but this is a waffle bathrobe and actually I may have sold Brooklyn and before similar like bathrobes and stuff but I found one for me that I kept it actually had some stains on it so I justified keeping it for that reason <laughs> and because I'm gonna be postpartum so soon but anyway this was a extra large extra extra large gray waffle knit robe that I got same bins trip $1.65 I had it listed for 60 and this actually was one of those interesting Poshmark sales where I received one offer on it and then probably the other likers got a notification that an offer had been sent. So then I immediately got another offer on it. It ended up being the case that the first offer was better. <laughs> so I accepted the first offer, which was 50. I mean, I had a list for 60 and uh, received a $50 offer, but I thought that was really cool. I like that Poshmark feature, like good job Poshmark developers and product designers or, you know, <laughs> Project, project managers or everyone who worked on that particular feature good job none of y'all are watching but you know I talk badly about these platforms and so I need to give them credit when they deserve it good job my gross profit on that was $38.35 and it sold within four days so if you find a Brooklyn in robe and it's in good condition even if it's at regular goodwill I'd say probably pick it up maybe check comps but it seems like robes is something that I'm really really getting interested in selling more of. Next is a good men's bolo brand and this was in a really fun thrift with me that I'll link up on the screen and it was Muggsy, a pair of Muggsy Fulton jeans. I couldn't even find a stock photo for these I don't think but I found them at Goodwill for $9.99. I had them listed for $58 and someone sent me an offer for $40 I think and that gave me a gross profit of $22.01 and it sold within three days. So I Really like Muggsy. It's a good brand to know. Another brand that sold fast but did get returned <laughs> because it was a Mercari return. I'm not even gonna get into that story. Was Taylor Stitch. So I didn't make this list because it actually wasn't on my list of sales. But yeah, I, in that particular thrift haul, I found some really good men's wear pieces and especially pants. There are just certain brands that are within men's that I love selling and Muggsy is one of them. Okay, next is a brand that some of y'all don't like picking up according to the comment section in that video once again. And it is Free People. This was actually a Crossroads purchase and I could not find the style name or the style photo anywhere. I didn't even check comps when I purchased it at Crossroads because I was certain I'd be able to find that, but I couldn't. So I just listed it with my photo and it still had tons of interest. I find that maxi dresses by Free People Beach, especially in larger sizes, do well. But this was a Free People, Free People Beach maxi dress. Honestly, I think I could have sold it for more than what I sold it for. My cost of goods because of the conversion was $3.83. I had it listed for $42. Probably could have got $30 at least for it. But someone sent me a really good bundle offer. It had a lot of items that I was excited to move. Um, and it included this one. So I let this go as a sacrificial lamb <laughs> so I could sell the others too. And so it sold for $25.20. But again, I think it could have sold for more because I had tons of interest on it on all platforms. And that gave me a gross profit of $16.33. And it sold within two days. So don't write off Free People Beach. Okay, next was a brand I was kind of, I haven't found in a long time. And so whenever that happens, I'm like, does this still sell? You know, I guess we'll find out. Barefoot Dreams. And this was their signature, one of their signature pieces, which is the Cozy Chic Light Circle Cardigan in black and a size medium. And I thrifted it for $9.99. I had it listed for $45 and received an offer for $30, which I accepted, which gave me a gross profit of $14.01 and it sold in two days. So not an astronomical gross profit, but I would definitely do that again and hope for a similar result. Two days, that's great. This actually surprised me with how fast it sold because formal wear typically does not sell overnight, but this one sold within two days. And it is a Nuitag Azazi. I don't know how to pronounce that. 
that's my, my best pronunciation. If it's wrong, let me know in the comments down below. A Zazie uh, Kindle and Kylie collaboration dress, and I sh featured this in a haul at some point. This was an interesting dress. It was, I think, a beautiful style, but it had a custom size, so I did have to kind of convert those measurements and a lot of y'all let me know in the comments down below that that's something that Zazie does is they do custom sizing which I think is great and I was just worried how it was going to resell but apparently it didn't affect the sale at all. I got it at Goodwill for $13. I had it listed for $60 and someone accepted my Posture VA offer for $42 which was great and within two days and it gave me a gross profit of $18.58 so a terrific result especially for a formal wear piece. Okay and then I had two Mercari sales that sold overnight. So these are the sales now that we're getting into that I listed one day and it sold the next day, which are my favorite ones. <laughs> but two of them listed the same day, they both sold overnight, which is like on Mercari, which was great. I was very happy that day. But the first, and actually both of these came from the same haul, which was just an ex exceptional haul because a lot of items on this list came from that haul. I'm like the Patagonia pieces, the Barefoot Dreams piece, and again, I linked that up on the screen earlier, but I think, but if I didn't, I'll link it up on the screen because I did a thrift with me with that, that particular trip. And it, this was a Bowden Eva jersey dress. Bowden, certain pieces do really, really well. And size matters. This was a size eight, which is good. I just don't pick up like size zero through four in Bowdoin really, unless it's at the bins. Okay, I paid fourteen ninety nine for this dress, so I wasn't I wasn't messing around. I was committed to getting this dress, and uh, I listed it for sixty five, and it sold overnight for fifty eight dollars and fifty cents. So good result. I actually thrifted one of the exact same style, exact same size, and different colorway that I still have, but. You know, it still has time to do well. And this had a gross profit of $35.46, which is great. It sold in one day. And then a brand I love finding. Let's call in more of this brand uh, this month. Because it's actually a brand that does really well in the spring and summer because they specialize kind of in breathable cotton and linen pieces. And it's Frank and Eileen. Uh, this was a perfect polo maxi dress. The tops by Frank and Eileen do well, but the dresses do even better. And this was a really cute, um, yeah, polo short sleeve, round hem, black maxi dress. It did have some fading, which I noted in the listing, I think. And then it also had a little stain that I could have removed. But I've, I've been in the spirit of, let's just list it <laughs> this month. And um, I'm glad I did because I listed it. I, I had a $7.99 cost of goods, which is great. And because of the flaws, I listed it a little bit lower for $120. I probably could have got more for it if it was in excellent condition, but it sold overnight for $90. And that gave me a gross profit of $69.90. So excellent result. Brink and Eileen, definitely a bolo. And we're going to we're gonna manifest more of it in February. <laughs> And then next was the other Patagonia sale that I've been referencing. It is this Patagonia Cinchilla Snap Tee Fleece Pullover from 19.99, And this had a couple of flaws, so I listed it lower. My cost of goods was $9.99. I listed it for $40, and someone accepted my Posture VA offer overnight for $28, which gave me a gross profit of $12.41. Even if Patagonia Cinchilla fleeces have flaws and if they're priced okay, I'd still pick them up and just list them lower and they'll still sell fast. Okay, so we have two more. One was on eBay, Public Rec. This is a men's brand, love. Love finding it, rarely do, but when I do, it's a no-brainer. Found these on a new rack. They are the Workday Pant. My cost of goods was $12.99. I had them listed for $75. I received an offer overnight for $50 on eBay, which I accepted, plus shipping, which gave me a gross profit of $30.65. And yeah, sold in one day. And then my last super fast sale, was a Poshmark sale of Smart Wool. Love Smart Wool. Love Smart Wool. Love Icebreaker. All those brands that are that really specialize in 100% merino wool piece. This wasn't 100% merino wool, but it did have 
parts that were, I think. Because it, it was a dress that had this quilted front. I got it at Goodwill for $9.99. Had it listed for $50. Someone accepted my Posher VA offer for $35, which gave me a gross profit of $15.99. Yeah, if you haven't tried Posher VA yet, use my code MOGIBETH. Uh, you'll get 20% off your first month, but you can also just try it two weeks free. So, highly recommend. Obviously, from this list, it generated a lot of sales for me and it generates a lot of sales. And when I couldn't use <laughs> Posture VA, my Poshmark sales plummeted. So, love that automation software. Work smarter, not harder. Use softwares in your business. Don't do everything yourself. That's what sold fast in January. That's how I did in January. Here, this is how I'm feeling. <laughs> Grateful that y'all watched this video. Grateful for these sales. Not grateful for the storm, but grateful we got through it safely. And we're still in one piece. And excited and hopeful for February. I hope you guys are feeling that way too. How has your first week of February been so far? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, I'll see y'all in the next one. Love y'all. Bye!